Hello, I'm Kate McKay and welcome to Survive to Thrive. Today I will be interviewing a woman named Brianna. I know Brianna from my author advantage and we'll be talking more about that um, when she comes on, but I wanted to read a little bio. Um, Brianna, Ru Ru I, I'm terrible, Ruelas oh, is a Dallas-based strategy consultant for performing artists, singer, and songwriters. She's author to Performing Arts Pathways, Navigate the Highs and Lows on Your Music Journey, and creator of the Performing Artist Pathway online course. She is also a restaurant owner, which fuels her with business strategies that she passes on to her clients. As a singer and performer for 30 years, Brianna has studied internationally and performed all genres from jazz to rock to pop, received a BA in theater arts from Pepperdine University and spent years honing her musical theater chops. After graduating from college, Brianna departed from the theater to pursue music as a solo artist. And she has fronted her own rock band and experienced the reality television craze in her early days as a top 100 finalists on American Idol season four. Welcome, Brianna. Thank you. I'm awesome. so happy to be here. It's Thank great you to see you, and I appreciate you having me. Say your last name right. So, okay. I, let me hear Brianna. your last name. Brianna Relas. Relas. Like wow. Ray, like the sun. Relas. Ray. Relas. Ray, but you know, Ray. Whatever. Brianna Ray. Relas. Relas. Yes. Yeah. That's you sound so much better saying everyone, it as I hacked it along. I don't know. Everyone <laughs> says it differently, but it's fine. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone in the family says it differently too. So, yeah, you know, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. So awesome to see you. And listen, um, just during this time, I reached out to, you know, some amazing people that I know that are doing really cool things in their field. And again, we know each other from Author Advantage Live through self-publishing school. Yes. And um, just a quick, um, quick little background. We met um, at a luncheon and she sat right next to me and all of a sudden there was just something going on and um yeah she had like this emotional moment some you know and I was like shifted right over to her and I was like are you okay and she's like I miss my babies so you know we were in Austin Texas and her babies were home and she was missing her kids and it was an emotional time for you and since then bonded sister mother friends so thank mm. you so much yeah I think I'm tearing up with you telling that story yeah I remember that. And I think I was also just so overwhelmed because when we had met, you know, we had also been experiencing like a really exciting, um, just opportunity to grow and learn. And, you know, I, I think I knew something big was like happening and I was in the midst of it and I didn't quite know what it was, what it was, but I knew right. I was like on the precipice of it. And, um, so I think I was feeling that not tension, but feeling that um, almost like that anxiety because I knew something was coming and I wasn't quite sure what it was. I couldn't put my finger on it. Right. Yeah. And we were, yeah. you were right there with me. You're right next to me feeling, you know, going through the same stuff. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, because we both have theater backgrounds, um, you know, I think theater and I, I'm curious on your insight on this has, was the greatest gift for me because really in essence, what it taught me is how to listen. <laughs> and how to be present. And I remember I was such a classic ADHD kid, could never sit still, always, Katie, sit down, you know, I was getting yacked at. But when I found theater, I was like, all I got to do is listen to people and I get A's? And I'm like, <laughs> kind of easy. <laughs> What's your take on that? How did you find theater in the arts? Yeah, so, I mean, I grew up as a singer. I've been singing my entire life and musical theater was the path. You know, that was the way for me to perform was through musical theater. So, I did musical theater my entire, you know, childhood up through high school and college. And for me, you know, I feel like theater was a way, it just developed so much presence, mm -hmm. confidence, um, and just in a way of like learning how to like carry yourself in a professional manner. And so I think that those are things that I've really also transferred into just my, my present day life too. Right. And every element, right? So both your life and business, right? Because I think Absolutely. part of it is being a coach and a consultant is tuning in to not only what's being said, but actually oftentimes more importantly, what's not being said. Yes, totally. And, you know, for me, you know, we're going to dive into this more, but just being in the music industry, like I shifted from theater to more music industry. And what I've done also, though, is I've taken a lot of the skills and a lot of the things that I've learned through theater 
and applied it to like teaching artists, you know, certain tools for performance and like certain ways that they can connect and engage with their audience. And it's all theater skills. It's all things that I learned in improv and, mm -hmm. you know, in musical theater. So it's really incredible how, you know, performance um, can transcend the different industries. Oh my gosh, I love it. And also this time too is a great leveler. I mean, as painful as this time is, and I think you and I, I we were just talking about that prior to the record button, but how it's like, it's basically time warp. And, and what is it being, what is being required of us during this time of people who have done a lot of um, self excavation work by nature of our trade? Um, and then how do we balance both that, that desire to kind of go inward and create with that higher calling to serve? And mm. I'm, I'm curious to know, like, how are you, what's your vision on that for you right now? Like, where is that play? Yeah. So, you know, I am spread very thin because I have three young kids. I have a 14 year old, a nine year old and a six year old. So I'm doing homeschooling for kinder and fourth grade. And then my daughter, thank God, she, as an eighth grader, she's pretty like, she's got it together, thankfully. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and on top of that, you know, my husband and I own two restaurants. So we're also juggling that. And um, I just come, came off of a huge um, course launch for my online course. So there was like, like all of these crazy puzzle pieces that I was um, trying to manage. Um, and for me, to answer your question more in depth, you know, my frame of mind is I do want to create because I'm finding that that's a major stress relief for me besides mm -hmm. running, um, creating, like I'm working on my second book and like just the process of like completely brain dumping and mapping out my entire second book in one sitting was such a beautiful feeling. I was like, Oh my God, I cannot wait to share this because that is the share. That's the service, right? Cause that will be value for my clients and for people who are struggling in their industry, their music industry, like careers. And, but then in the same sense, I'm also trying to, in my brain go, how can I support these artists, these creatives out there with free trainings? Like I want to, I want to deliver free content, but I also don't want to like kill myself. So there's a major balance that is happening right now because I definitely want to support and offer value, but I also have to like protect myself and I have to make sure that like, I'm not drowning. Right. Oh, so gosh, it's, that's so it's, good. It's I remember, really major. Like, yeah. I don't know if it was my coach, but I, one of my coaches, but I often talk about like, number one is we can't serve from an empty cup, right? We only can, you know, if a cup is, we have to, we have to serve from our cup running over. Yeah. Right? That the cup runneth over from yeah. the tea that's spilling out. Yeah. The tea that's spilling out. That's where you serve from. <laughs> right. And then also too, it's like, I'm thinking of like the 80, 20 split, even when it comes to your charity work. So 80% of your business, you know, as a creative, it's hard to do it, but it has to be money making because what you're doing is offering huge value, especially with, with all of your experience, seriously. And then 20% is the charity. And I even go with that. Like if mm. the phone rings and I'm feeling depleted and I'm like, you know, I don't really feel like that charity work because I know it's going to be a friend or client that's in need. And, and mm -hmm. I think that that's been my biggest learning challenge, um, particularly as I've gotten a little older in my fifties now, um, how to uh, protect and honor that, uh, that peace that goes without knowing, you know, that deep inner peace. And, you know, listen, I've, I've worked hard to get it and I'm, I'm committed to holding on to it. And at the same time, being able to serve at the highest level. Absolutely. Mm. So how are you managing that. your self-care? How does that work? Oh, that's for you that's right a now? great question. <laughs> um, I'm running and walking a lot, and that's sort of my escape, like my quiet time. Sometimes the girls go with me, sometimes it's just me solo. And I'm um, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much the extent of it. Because I have a really small house, which I love because I don't need a big old house. I have a small, cozy house, but there's nowhere to go. So I mean, I had a full on like meltdown last week and my poor daughters, you know, they're like, they can hear me crying. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't <laughs> want to do this in front of you, but I had nowhere to go, you know? So it is hard. This is a really difficult time to be managing self-care, but you know, I, I'm also meditating and praying in the morning and taking my mornings to make sure that I am quiet uh, and starting my day off like that. And when I don't start my day off with that, like time to just center, pray, meditate, whatever that, you know, for me, it's prayer um, and like journaling. Um, I, I, the, the rest of my day is like, not wait, so I don't, no, 
it's just you, a, it's, it's just the most up. bizarre thing could because it, it could actually only be like 10 minutes of yeah. prayer meditation i'm like oh i'm right it let's go if i yes. don't do that i'm like why did yesterday suck so bad and then i realized oh, oh. yeah because you know, i think that's that's the key you know it's like for me i have to get that physical exercise to especially right now there's tensions are super high and I need to get that physical exercise to get that stress out. And then in the mornings, like really centering myself and being focused on how I can like give heart, give with heart, give with love and um, be focused. And like you said, I love that 80, 20 rule. I mean, I think that's really great. Right. Yeah. Just for, and on, and on everything, even on nutrition, I use that, you know, it's like, you know, if I'm eating clean 80%, um, I was re I'm relaunching my first book, Living Sexy Fit, and I'm going through and I'm like, oh yeah, I knew something six years ago, <laughs> but it's amazing. It's always horrifying to read what you wrote, like with one eye, you know, like, oh my gosh, it sucked. No. But anyway, so talk to me a little bit. Um, obviously, I want to touch base because most people are going to be very curious about you being on American Idol. And what are some of the things that you learned on that? In particular, I'd love you to touch on grittiness and how that has or hasn't applied to you in your life. And resilience, I should say. Too. Absolutely, absolutely. So I did American Idol on season four, the year that Carrie Underwood won. And um, that, those were the times when people wrapped around, you know, the stadiums. I mean, I camped out, I camped out next to, you know, this guy named Rodney. And we literally were just in line for like, you know, 12 hours or whatever, however long it was. It was a long time. I mean, the first day, I mean, it was a full day the first time, you know, the first day. And then we, I got called back for four more days before I made it to Hollywood. So it's like a really major um, experience. I think the year that I became a hundred, a top hundred finalist, a hundred thousand um, people auditioned that year, um, wrapping around stadiums in seven different cities. Um, so that was a, it's just a lot different now. They're not doing it like that. Um, mm -hmm. So it was a huge, huge deal to make it. And, um, you know, I always tell people, like, a as amazing as the experience was, you know, I learned a lot because at the time, I mean, I really had no idea who I was as an artist. I, I was a musical theater girl. I just wanted a chance to sing, you know, so it's just much different now today because now we've got artist development, we've got music schools in every corner, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's just a major shift that has been made with how we're developing artists from a really young age. And so by the time they get to American Idol, they have, a, they have a pretty strong sense. I mean, they're not a, you know, exactly there, but they have a pretty strong sense of who they are as an artist and the type of music they want to sing and all of these components. Um, yeah, and you know, it's funny because I always tell people right after I got, you know, about three months after getting um, you know, booted off American Idol, I found out I was pregnant with my first daughter. Oh, wow. So that was, um, we want to talk about grittiness. I mean, I thought my, I, A, I thought my life was over and B, I thought, oh, well, I guess, Yes, I'm no longer going to be in the music and I mean, I'm done. I, I didn't sing for two years. Like I thought, well, now I'm a mom. I can't sing. I can't do this, you know? And it was just like this massive lie that I was, you know, buying into that a American Idol was my last shot, you know, wow. and B now that I'm a mom, I can't do music. So those were two lies that I, I really bought into for quite a while. So whose then, voice was that Brianna that you were hearing? I was think, it cultural? Was it your mom? Was it your family? You know what I mean? Like, was it just yeah. your inner confidence or what do you think? Well, I think, I think part of it was cultural. So like by the time, you know, I'd gotten to that, I was in my early twenties. So I'm thinking now I'm too old. Like I've passed <laughs> the mark to do music, you know? So <laughs> now I'm too old because I'm not young anymore, right? And you know, some of that is so people are still look at look at it that way, depending on like like there's an expiration date as to how long you can be pursuing, you know, being a solo artist, all that. And then the second component would be, you know, in my brain, definitely how I was thinking about um, myself uh, as a mother and just picturing, well, well, mothers need to be attentive, and mothers, you know, I mean, I'm I grew up in Dallas, Texas, you know, I'm thinking about the moms who took care of, you know, I mean, my mom worked, but like, I didn't necessarily, I wanted to be present. I wanted to know what was going on with my kid. Like, I didn't want. And how interesting. So there was a, uh, a dichotomy or a, uh, or a break from being present and yet still being the creative musician. Wow. So Absolutely. what was the bridge for that? You know, um, I, you know, it was just one of those things where over time I realized, thankfully I had a husband who was very supportive and he's like, if you don't, start creating or singing or doing something with music. Not only are you going to drive me crazy, you're going to drive yourself crazy. And I was, I got very depressed. So I always tell artists and creatives that if you aren't tapping into 
your gifts and who you are as a creative um, and you're suppressing them and ignoring them, that's going to bite you in the butt. And eventually you're going to not only uh, emotionally suffer, you're going to physically suffer. Mm -hmm. So mentally, emotionally, creatively, physically, everything I was suffering, I, I became very depressed and I couldn't determine, I couldn't figure out why, like, mm -hmm. I'm like I have a husband, I have a kid, I have a house, I, what, all these things I've always wanted. Like, not that I grew up going, I want all these things, but that's just kind of how my mindset was at the time. But I realized that, you know, my lifeline, like, is creativity. Like, that is something that fuels me and it's part of my blood. It's part of my fiber. And when you don't use that or tap into that in any way, like, and it can, it can shift how you use it, uh, you Absolutely. will, you will suffer. And not just you, the people around you will suffer because mm -hmm. you're going to be miserable. Right. So I, love, I think it was um, maybe Les Brown. He's one of my favorite uh, motivational guys, but he basically like was like, where's the richest place in all the world? You know, is it Dubai? Is it Fifth Avenue? No, it's the cemeteries because that's where all people's dreams die. Right. Oh, so, you know, viewers out there, you know, you have something friggin' unique. I don't care what it is. But it, this is, again, a wonderful time to embrace what's uniquely you. Because the bottom line is we're all creatives, you know? I didn't think I was an artist because I wasn't a fine artist. Even though, like, I was an actress, I, you know, I did, had all these successes. And then I realized, well, creativity is actually me building a multi-million dollar company. Creativity is being able to create wild relationships. Creativity is the way that I've dealt with grief and loss, right? So I truly believe that creativity is the essence of the human soul. So in what ways are you tapping into it? That's my pitch for the day. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, right, yes. baby? All right, so talk to me a little bit because I want to talk about one of the things that you wrote down um, as a topic idea. And what it is, is why being a jack of all trades queen or king of none is not such a bad thing right now. Absolutely. So for a very long time, you know, I always had my hands in a bunch of different pots. Like I couldn't just do one thing, you know, I, you know, I couldn't be an incredible dancer or an incredible actor or, you know, I was like, no, I got to do it all. Cause I, it was all very interesting to me. And for a very long time, I thought that that was actually a detriment that I, that because I wasn't like, you know, the king of one skill, you know, that that was going to be a problem for me or that I wouldn't really ever see true success, you know? Mm -hmm. And as I've become older and, and experienced more, I realized that has been the biggest asset for me is actually having that creative and um, this, like the, all of that diversity in my right. experience, because collectively it makes me and what I offer as a consultant and what I offer as a creative, um, it, it completes the package, you know, it makes me unique. And totally. so that is something I, you know, I definitely always share with people is like, think about your collective experience and understanding that all of that brings you to where you are today. And you can use that to, to serve others and to create, you know, to create products, to create whatever it might be for you uh, as a creative or, you know, just in, in, in the industry, truly. So for, you know, recently, I realized my husband and I, um, my husband is a restaurateur. We own two restaurants in Dallas and I've been doing the marketing and accounting and like all the back work for the business since we opened. And I, I wasn't an accountant. You know, this is something that like I learned a new skill six years ago. And, um, and so all of these different things that I learned, all these business skills that I learned becoming a restaurant owner and then shifting that into, you know, I started doing commercial radio, I'm not um, commercial radio voiceovers. I did that too a long time ago um, is voice coaching, performance coaching, which led me to write my book, which led me to speak at music festivals, create um, consulting for my clients, all of these things. I realized that my background in restaurant as a small business is my approach to the music industry. So I always tell people, I take a small business approach to the music industry and I teach clients and creatives online business strategies for their career success, for their music career success. So awesome. So that's how I've been able to blend, you know, my journey, my expertise as a singer, as a performer, as a restaurant owner, you know, as an author, all these different components. That's how I've been able to really blend all of that and get creative with how I serve others. Right. And I love that. Um, using that whole point about your diverse interests, 
and always having the curiosity and the willingness to learn. You know, it's like, I didn't know business either. I never took a business class, right? And then I built a gold company. Like, what? I'm just this like poor Irish Catholic girl, right? We don't even have gold. Um, so it's just being able to lean into the curiosity and having it be okay to not know. It's okay right. not to know. And I think that right now we have a culture of very scared people that are so afraid to say, I don't know. So what would you say to those people, Brianna? People who aren't sure, who don't Absolutely. know how to tap into their creative sense. Absolutely. Well, I, I always say just like put one foot in front of the other, like take action because one thing leads to the next leads to the next. So not knowing, you know, first of all, there are so many resources. There's resources that are free. There's resources that are paid. There's coaching, there's consulting, there's, there's YouTube, there's, there's so many things that you can do to educate yourself. And I'm always, you know, knowledge is empowering and knowledge is, is at your fingertips daily. You just have to choose to a take action mm -hmm. and b like grab that knowledge. And, you know, this, this is for both professional and personal growth, because ultimately if you're growing in a professional way, you are evolving as a person. Right. And it's, and it can be uncomfortable and it can be scary, but I think that I always tell people to embrace the discomfort because yeah, growth, growth is, that. yeah, growth is uncomfortable. That discomfort. I think yeah. that that's the most important thing is realizing you are going to be uncomfortable. Yes. You, you legit are. And like right now, way, this is right, like right now, all of this, this yes. is a global intense, uh, sense of who knows what's next. So uncertainty, we cling to certainty as human beings. And in what ways can we lean in to the power of uncertainty to birth our best and most, you know, wild self as yeah. we lean in. And, yeah. and taking and taking that time, you know, whether it's in the morning, like think about where, you know, your creative hours are, but taking that time to just say, well, what, what do I want? Like this is because maybe you've, maybe it's changed for you. Maybe mm -hmm. this is opening up different opportunities for you. And maybe what you wanted six months ago is not what you want today. And, and really identifying those priorities for yourself mm. and moving forward and then taking action on those things that you actually want. I mean, mm. I so, it's like, so, so the question that you said was really just sitting down and intentionally answering the question, what do I want today? Yeah. Today, now, like, now, <laughs> right. Yes. Me, not and my yeah. mother, not my father, not my husband, right. not my sister, not my brother, not my kids. What do you want now? Yes. And what, you know, do, is it, do you want to make an impact? Do you want to share something? Do you want to create something? Do you, do you just want to have peace? Do you just want to mm. take care of yourself? Like mm. whatever it is, like, again, I just believe that, you know, we evolve and, and especially with what's happening right now, whatever you wanted three months ago or six months ago may not be the same that right. you want today, you know? So it's important to take that time to reevaluate and if, if needed or if necessary to shift trajectory so that you can actually be intentional with your journey, with your journey and take this opportunity to get the support you need. If that's, if you're wanting to create a business, maintain a business, build a business. If you're wanting to create products, um, find the work. right relationship. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it can be like, Develop. get out of a shitty one. I mean, come yes. on, let's just play it real. There is going to be a lot of shifts and changes and you've got to own who you are and do that yes. work and delve in because, um, the only thing you could depend on right now is, well, for me is my faith, but it's also like my sense of who I am and my sense of integrity and authenticity. And if I don't have that, if I don't have the peace of knowing who I am, I'm screwed. <laughs> yes. So, well, and something that I realized, you know, over the past few weeks, because tensions are just high in general, is I was trying, it was almost like I was going backwards and seeking, um, affirmation approval from my husband like to say mm. it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay wow like and I was going it's like I was reverting like to that scarce like that scared fear like that fear mind mindset you know yeah. I needed him to tell me it's gonna be okay I need I was seeking security through him mm. and at the end of the day like that's not his job you know <laughs> like 
yes, he, he can love me and tell me it's going to be okay. But like at the end of the day, like I have to know that. And faith is really important to me as well. And like my security really stems from my faith and like also being grounded in who I am and what I know to be true. So I can't, you know, that's just a really high expectation for, for me to place on him. You know, it's right. like, and, and at the same time, I just, I adore what you shared about you having that rough day. Cause I know you've had a lot of things going on for yourself personally and having that big boo hoo and being able to say, sorry, babies, you know, because like right now that was a vulnerable moment. And, you know, right now it's okay to have your emotions and say, you know, what I need for you right now is to hold me. What I need right now for you is just to listen. What I need from you right now, speak your truth on what you need. And, ex and have it be okay that it could be a slobbery, blobbery mess. And, it, and, yeah. and that level of authenticity with your children, your husband, your spouse, your friends is really in essence what builds intimacy and it's going to save our butts as we move through this. Yeah. And just keeping it real. Because I, mm. like, I had realized, you know, I, with everything going on, I had been suppressing the stress. Mm. And then it just like, it's going to come up no matter what at some point. So you mm. either like deal with it or it's going to deal with you later. So <laughs> exactly. That's a tweet right there. But yeah. So just respecting your time. Is there anything last minute that you want to share? I know you have a new book percolating and that online course, but is there any last minute? And those will all be available in the show notes. Cause I'm sure you're going to have some people. Yeah, that no, absolutely. Like so, you know, I do a lot of private one-on-one -on -one consulting, which, you know, I just shared with you, I'm coaching, um, music industry, um, producers, songwriters, et cetera in addition to, you know, performing artists and really everything that I focus on in my course is through online business strategies, you know, for that success for them. And I think a lot of times creatives and artists are just so into the creating part that they, that they forget that there's a foundational piece mm -hmm. that needs to be set in order to create sustainability for them as a creative, as an artist. So that's everything that I bring to the table with my clients is really in enabling them to have a solid foundation with online business strategies so that they can market their message, get, you know, get their music out there, get their, you know, get their creativity out into the world and finding who, who indeed wants it. Um, and yes, I'm excited about the, the book. The book is going to be an extension of that. And, you know, you can find me on my website, briannarellesmusic.com. And same thing with social media, Facebook and Instagram at Brianna Rellis music. And um, that's, Yes, that's where you can find me. That's awesome. So I look forward to partnering with you as we um, birth new vision and also just spreading love to you and your family in Texas from Massachusetts. And um, I appreciate let's that. Let's just Thank keep you. rocking it, girl, holding you in love and holding all viewers in love. And um, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you and take good care. We'll see you again soon.